Welcome back to TTC and the fifth episode of our Light Lumen test series, today featuring six of the most requested rechargeable headlamps from you guys in the comments. We built an unapologetically DIY light integration sphere to measure light lumen output and shine some light, so to speak, on the ever increasingly insane lumen ratings we're seeing on lights nowadays. Based on test reports from a lab qualified to do this sort of thing, our little foam sphere seems to be doing a pretty good job at it too. So today we're going to be taking all of these headlamp models, going over their features, how they fit, test their lumen output versus what they advertise, measure their runtime with lumen output there as well, and measure their charging speed. All the headlamp models we'll be showing today are without proximity sensors as we've had trouble in the past measuring those consistently, always dropping down into low when we get it up next to something, which is why today's episode is our first headlamp one. We did try the Olight Perrin 2 and Phoenix HM65R, both of those hitting their lumen rating surprisingly, but with us preferring the functions and especially the headband of the Phoenix. Today's examples are going to include Slonic from Amazon, Coast, Milwaukee, Petzl, Nightcore, and Matco Tools. The first three we're showing today are very similar in size, design, and spec, so we'll be grouping those together first. And up first is the best-selling rechargeable headlamp on Amazon, the Sonic Slonic, Slonic the Hedgehog for only $35, 1,000 lumens, two LEDs, and 3.5 hours on high from a 2200 milliamp hour 18650? Sounds too good to be true. Its modes are pretty easy to navigate, which I like. Hold down to adjust output, then when you click to turn on, the last mode you're in shows up. It has a generic looking 18650 battery rated for 2200 milliamp hours, which you can take out by unscrewing the end, and the other end unthreads to reveal a micro USB port for charging, a design they may have borrowed from our next two participants because they are very similar, but for now we want to see those 1000 lumens. So we're waiting 30 seconds with it on high per the ANSI FL1 standard, and it looks like we're seeing 615, 611, 612, 615 lumens from this 1000 lumen headlamp, and that is on high. Lower modes look to be 450, 330, 140 and 50 lumens. 61 to 62 percent of its claims, not great, but also as far as Amazon brands go, could be worse as we found out before. Now for the next step up in price, the much requested Coast brand. This is their XPH30R, which compares pretty much exactly to that Slonic, the Hedgehog. 1000 lumens from another cylindrical angle adjustable light housing with an 18650 inside. Coast is a well-known brand sold everywhere from Amazon to Walmart to on the tool truck. And one of the reasons for that is how affordable they typically are. This example being 46 bucks. You can feel a step up in quality from the last one with this Coast as well. No sharp edges, the threads are oiled and smooth. And this one takes a USB-C, which we always prefer. And a Coast branded 2600 milliamp hour battery this time. It also has a focus for the beam angle, which is rare in this category. But let's revisit another 1000 lumen claim. This time, 917, 911, 912, we're calling that 912 lumens. Then low is only 120 lumen. You press down and hold to enter its turbo mode. Certainly a lot closer to 1000 this time. And in real life, it looks basically the same as a 1000 lumen light. This is the Nightcore HC60 a very highly requested brand from those of you in the comments, and this model matching the 1000 lumen figure we've been looking at so far. This one's also $60, a bit more expensive, but not really that much when it comes to lights these days. For that price, it does come with a very high capacity 18650 cell, 3400 milliamp hours, which should help it in our runtime testing. It has a small front switch, which we don't really love, not as easy as the others to quickly raise your hand up and click on, you have to hold to adjust its brightness levels, then hold when pressing on to enter into the last mode you used. This light is very bright in person with its sort of more focused high candela beam. It uses a micro USB, which is sort of old school, and the cap threads are a bit more fine thread and harder to quickly open and close than the Coast model. But what about those 1000 lumens? Let's see, 1020, 1034, 1052, we're calling that 1040 lumens. Finally cresting that lumen claim on the box, relying on one of the more top shelf brands to do so. 
Coming in at $70 or $10 more than that Nightcore, and finally a different design, a very different design from the rest of the bunch today, is the 600 lumen Milwaukee 2115. This being a part of their red lithium USB 3.0 line, which means it'll be using their 3000 milliamp hour proprietary design swappable 18650 cell. It also comes with some hard hat clips because, well, all of Milwaukee's headlamps are sort of catered to hard hat guys, I feel. We tried to hone in on one of the least sort of hard hat requiring models with this 2115 based on reviews. One thing we usually can rely on Milwaukee for is their true view color temperature that's easier on the eyes and identifies colors better. This one providing 600 lumens in a clean and crisp appearing way to us. The drawback of Milwaukee headlamps such as this though is the battery pack in the back, which is by no means unnoticeable. You can either swap that battery out or plug in using the included micro USB to charge, which we'll measure later on. So let's see it though, 600 lumens. We're seeing 516, 517, 515 with medium being 300, low being 112 and dim being just 25 lumens. Back in high and still not reaching near 600, though peak lumens are just one indication of usable brightness after all. Climbing up in price yet again now from the 18650 cylinder models and sort of made for climbing in the outdoors in general, it's the Actic Core 450. This is a stupidly popular headlamp on Amazon, REI, and lots of other retailers. This model comes from a brand I'm going to try my darnness not to call Pretzel. At $70 and only 75 grams in weight, it would appear the goal was to make this one as light as possible for cyclists and hikers because it doesn't hit you over the head with a feeling of quality and robustness. Very plasticky, the button sort of feels thin and hollow as well. The whole light opens with less finesse than a remote controller for your TV. To reveal a Petzl core battery, which is sort of like a triple pod of AAA batteries inside, but takes a micro USB to charge as this is a lithium variant. It's kind of cool. So it can run either triple A's or this, but does equate to about 1250 milliamp hours or so of equivalent battery capacity. Can't imagine it runs at 450 lumens too long at that power source. But can it at least hit those 450 lumens with its dual LEDs? We're seeing 415, 414, yeah, 412 to 414, not bad. Pretty close to their 450. Dim is only a couple lumens and medium is around 120 or so. Last up, we have Mako representing the mobile tool truck suggestions from the comments, this being the latest headlamp introduction from the four tool trucks. The Pro Charge headlamp, 400 lumens with a spotlight and also 400 lumens via a ring floodlight. This is about $92 on the truck and its main attraction, I'd say, is its wireless charging. The Pro Charge pads, this being the single, they have a dual as well, accepts their Pro Charge lights and they sort of just slap on here and start charging. The pad itself magnetizes to stuff like a car lift or something and it has an extendable cradle here for smartphones but you can also use a standard USB-C to charge it here. So let's see the 400 lumens then. 396, 400, 392. And for the floodlight, we get 400, 404. Yeah, 400 lumens, pretty on point. Our next stop coming up will be how these lights produce lumens over time, which historically has been the real test of lights on this channel. But if you want to use these headlamps on your noggin, you're gonna wanna make sure they stay on there. Enter channel's new mail order boyfriend. The Matco is a very straightforward sort of strap. It's got this line of sticky substance that keeps things from moving around. And it's the only headband today that routes its band behind the bracket so that the bracket of the light itself is up against your head with that pad and it keeps things in place. The Amazon Slonic was also quite plug and play with nice angle adjustability. No real complaints there, stays on. The Petzl might be the easiest and least likely to move around once it's on in the bunch. It's lightweight to the point where you sort of forget you're wearing it sometimes. Its angle adjustment is though very clicky and hollow feeling again as a result of those lightweight plastics. The rest of the bunch took some adjustment to get going. The Coast is a simple single strap, but took a lot of fiddling to get it to fit this guy's head. But it can easily be removed from the head bracket altogether while you're wearing it to magnetize to some work surfaces, which is unique and sometimes quite useful, I've found. The Milwaukee, despite this being one of Milwaukee's models that are least tailored for hard hats, took a whole bunch of slack being removed to work on 
your head, and even then always felt a bit clunky and baggy. The third strap helps it to stay on your head in general, but always felt a bit loose and out of place for me. If you're a construction guy though, this should be no problem. They work on hard hats quite well. Lastly, the Nightcore also took quite a bit of playing around with to fit on anything right, and also had a hard time staying put. I found this one you couldn't really wear on a hat as it kept sliding up and needed to be worn quite low on you to avoid that sliding up. All right though, let's see it. What kind of lumens do these lights offer after you're out of their ANSI FL1 standard test range where most people are using these? Here's the first three headlamps, those aluminum 18650 cell ones of similar design. So despite the Nikkor and Coast making more lumens, they all fall quite quickly to a similar range within minutes. From there, the Coast drops all the way down from the pack and coasts near 100 lumens basically forever. The Slonic the Hedgehog is surprisingly not in as much a hurry as the Coast to fall down. And yeah, the Nightcore with its large battery on what Nightcore calls high before spiking then dying at the end. The Nightcore was only supposed to last an hour on turbo, but it refuses to stay in turbo for more than a couple minutes. So it spends its life at that high setting that it rightly calls 420 lumens here for about three hours, longer than the two and a half hours they advertise. The Slonic is supposed to last three and a half hours on high and managed two hours and 45 minutes of that. And the Coast, oh boy, they say 7.75, seven and three quarters hours on high. We started in turbo, of course, but it dropped out of that real quick and lasted three hours and 20 minutes, less than half their advertised time, spending most of that time at honestly, keychain light levels of lumen output. All right, so we're gonna be adding the Petzl in white, the Matco in burgundy, and the 2115 Milwaukee in red now. All three of these additions advertise exactly two hours on high. The Petzl didn't drop down as much as we quite expected it to, given its battery size, and the Milwaukee and Matco sort of meet up, but then the Milwaukee pulls away and up until it dies off first, just after the two hour mark. The Matco we noticed holds its lumens better in the spotlight mode, but it meets its end around the same time as the Petzl, where we called it quits due to both lights putting out non-useful levels of lumens at two hours and 40 minutes. Considering the Milwaukee, Mako, and Petzl all advertise two hours, and the Milwaukee did two hours and 18 minutes, and Mako and Petzl did two hours and 40, pretty good stuff compared to the previous three. Here's a look at their temperatures across the run. This is simply useful for seeing where some of that energy was wasted rather than turning it into lumens with it. What surprised us here was that the Coast didn't get super hot, yet drained its 2600 milliamp hour battery by just making 100 lumens most of the time. Didn't really add up as much as the others did with their specs and performance. So let's take a look at those batteries and charging speeds before we head over to our data roundup and see what their scores look like today. In order of advertised battery size, we got the Petzl up first with its 1250 milliamp hour battery, supposed to take three hours. Looks like it's taking half an amp, pretty standard at this size. This core battery takes three hours and eight minutes to charge 6,418 milliwatt hours, or about 1,600 milliamp hours when you divide its native voltage, which we're doing now rather than looking at its milliamp hours because that's just that five volt charging. Next up is the Mako, which is also supposed to be three hours on a charge. It can charge on its wireless pad at 0.7 amps or plugged in at 0.62, which eventually climb to about three quarters of an amp. After charging, that's two hours and 23 minutes and 6871 milliwatt hours or about 1715 milliamp hours, which is about spot on for this guy as well. The Slonic from Amazon is up next with its small capacity for an 18650 2200 milliamp hour battery, but two hour advertised charge time. This one looks to take about 1.2 amps when charging, very nice for this sort of no name, lowest cost brand and when charged also exceeds its 2200 milliamp hour rating by quite a bit here, and that's also rare for Amazon brands we find. The Coast has the next step up in advertised battery capacity at 2600 milliamp hours, but doesn't advertise the charge time. Looks like it receives about most of 0.9 amps from the three amp capable wall adapter we always use, and took just two hours to charge, but more interestingly, 6500 milliwatt hours even at, let's say, 3.8 volts, that's only 1,700 milliamp hours. That's tiny. And there should even be some charge losses there. So we're talking, what, 1,600 to 1,650 milliamp hours on an 
18650 battery. No wonder this light wasn't able to keep 900 lumens and drop down to 100 so fast despite not wasting that in heat. Of course, the beauty of 18650 lights is you can just always swap out your own cell in there or not even have to plug this guy in, use a standalone 18650 charger. But that's of course additional cost that this Coast is not exactly advertising when it's seen as a bargain. Definitely throw the cell that comes with this light right in the trash as soon as you get it and buy yourself a high capacity 18650 like the Nightcore comes with. And high capacity it really is. We saw only about half an amp delivering to this guy and considering we started at 30.46 watt hours, doing some math after it's charging, we're near 4,000 milliamp hours on this 18650 cell. But this charger's total time went from six hours, 50 minutes to 15 hours, 42. Nine hours to charge this thing? It's no wonder that they also don't advertise charge time. You're definitely going to need an external charger and spare battery for this guy, meaning it's $60 is more like 90 now. Last up, we have the Milwaukee with its sort of 18650, sort of not red lithium 3.0. The Milwaukee always brings an impressive charging rate. We're seeing 1.8 amps here, which reached to about two amps during its charge time. And that totaled one and a half hours, very impressive. 11 watt hours total with 2,900 milliamp hours on the cell. So just about what we expected. So all that data and testing has led to this, a data chart where you can make your own informed buying decision about which headlamp is right for you. An order of price, also with the three top being the 18650 cylinder type headlamps. So here's their advertised lumen, how much we measured their lumen output to be here, and that difference. Standouts here being the Slonic, had only 62% of their claim, but not exactly shocking being an Amazon bestseller in our experience. Then the Milwaukee, sort of yet again coming in under those lumen claims. Their flashlights are usually on point, but their floods, Maybe it's how they measure those individual SMDs rather than from the total light source, but anyways, usually a bit down. Here's the runtime, which is probably more important for something you're gonna be consistently having on on top of your head rather than turning on and off. But even more importantly, we feel, are those average lumens, how bright these lights are actually in use over a course of their run, not just in some brief turbo settings. The Nightcore taking first place here, followed surprisingly by the Milwaukee, despite these other two up here being rated for 1,000 lumens. It's helped in part by dying off quicker when we're talking about average lumens. Then the Mako, then the Slonic, the Petzl, and finally the Coast, which really must be getting some of those sales based on numbers like 1,000, and the design features we do like, but overall just not putting out that much lumens in real use. Then charge time, the standout being Milwaukee for good reasons, and the Nightcore for Oof, reasons, nine hours. Good thing that 18650 comes out, otherwise that would really sink this one, I think. Then rough battery size, the Coast being the only real one to be so far off that we feel it's outside of their advertised claims and not by accident. They're certainly saving some coin by giving you that battery. We got charge type here, whether it's uh, with a cord or not, swappable battery or wireless in this case. Then we got weight, which might be important in this category, the Milwaukee weighing two and a half times the Petzl in this case due to that hefty backside she's sporting. Then finally, our subjective rating on how well they fit and adjust onto your head. Overall, we felt the Coast could have been made easily better with a better battery. We're not sure if that would have helped it not step down to its 100 lumen level as quickly as it did. But if you're gonna be buying one of these, toss out that battery as soon as possible. The Nightcore was a standout for being sort of middle of the pack price-wise, but also battery related. You'll need your own standalone charger and spare batteries to not have this one be down for a whole day when it's charging that cell. The Slonic wasn't bad all set, definitely not getting near its 1000 lumens, which is sort of the point of what we're doing here, but it makes us wonder where else they're saving money by not telling you or being honest. At $35 though, hard to be that mad at it. The Milwaukee we'd recommend for you hard hat guys. The light quality is really worth it if you can make it work for you. And the Petzl and Mako are basically everything they advertise in a little bit more. The Petzl being very good for climbing, we imagine, with its lightweight, but maybe you wouldn't want to accidentally step on it. And the Mako being somewhat pricey, but also part of a wider wireless charging family, which for automotive techs can be time-saving at the end of the day. What were your thoughts? Did we miss your favorite brand or model? Let us know in the comments so we don't miss it next time. And thanks for watching.